May everyone mute themselves, please. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only one who can take us out in what he put us through. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a difficult time, as we know, strong people are not just born. They are made by the storms they walk through, and we are walking through storms. Maybe it is one of the moments when we can get a true meaning of one ayah in the Quran when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَدَوْقَتَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَرْضُ بِمَا رَحُبَتْ The earth with its wideness, how wide this earth is, it became so tight to mankind. وَدَوْقَتَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنفُسُهُمْ Even we feel tight in our own chest in our own homes due to the situation we are going through. And this is a time we need to realize the only one to run to is to run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a time when we can live up to the proverb that is saying, what is the benefit of how wide this world is if your shoes is tight? And the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam says, المؤمن القوي خير وأحب إلى الله من المؤمن الضعيف. A strong believer is better and more beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than a weak one. But there is goodness in both. It means even a weak believer, it's never too late. It is time to become strong. And this is a time we need to show the strength and the muscle of our faith, we need to walk by faith. And then the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam continued to say, Ihris ala ma yanfauk, wasta'in billah wa la ta'jas. Work hard to achieve what you believe is useful for you. And while you are doing that, remember the only one who can help you to achieve that is Allah. So seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the meaning of iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. Oh Allah, we worship you, only you, in every move of our life. But to be able to be successful in our worship even, we need a divine support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With that support, you were able to leave your bed this morning to stand up for Fajr Salat. This is a big ni'mah. You have been chosen. So the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, work very hard to achieve what is useful to you and stop showing weakness, don't be weak. You have to have a willpower and create your own destiny because Allah has given us that power and that uh, opportunity. And then he said, don't show weakness. And then he said, in asaba kashay, after doing your best, for what is useful to you, if something wrong happened to you, stop blaming yourself or blaming the other people. La taqul, la faaltu kadha, kana kadha wa kadha. If something goes wrong, don't say, if I did this, this should not have been happened. But say, qaddar Allahu wa ma sha'a fa'al. This is a qadr from Allah. Allah has destined and Allah has written something to happen to me and he does to me what he wants. Because once you start to say, if, 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 you are opening the way and the authority of shaitan on your own soul, and then you become driven by shaitan. is not hidden behind money or building because the Prophet said, 
Taisa Abdu Dinar, Taisa Abdu Dirham. The one who looks for happiness and worshiping money is a miserable person. And one artist also said, money is only numbers and numbers never end. If it is money that makes you happy, your search for happiness will never end. So where is happiness? It is a divine gift. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place it in your heart. Happiness is like barakah. When barakah comes into your time, it will become useful. When it comes into your money, it becomes useful. When it becomes in your body, it becomes useful. So we're not talking about being happy, we're talking about being right. And the ayah I want to share with us tonight is not the ayah number 13 and 14 in Surah An-Nisa, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ يُتِعَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ Anyone who obeys Allah and his messenger, يُدْخِلْهُ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا He will admit them into Jannah, in which rivers are flowing, and they will be in it forever. No more death, no more suffering, no more ending of the happiness. وَذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ And that is the ultimate success when we make it to Jannah. I'm not talking about this ayah, neither the following ayah. وَمَنْ يَعْسِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ And anyone who does disobey Allah and his messenger. وَيَتَعَدَّ حُدُودَهُ And went through all the red lights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Went beyond the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يُدْخِلُهُ نَارًا Allah will admit him into fire, Jahannam. خَالِدًا فِيهَا And he will be in it for eternity. وَلَهُ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ And that person will have a humiliating punishment. I'm not talking about this ayah. I'm not talking either about the ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ Don't even go near to the fawahish. And fawahish is the extreme immorality or a sin you can think of, we call it fahisha. People commit sins, but some people choose the major ones and they live with them, that is fahisha. Especially when to do with sexual immorality. وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الْفَوَاحِشْ مَا ذُهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ Don't even go near to this fahisha. And in one ayah, Allah explained one of the fahisha, when he said وَلَا تَقْرَبُ zina. Don't go near zina, adultery, fornication. Innahu kana fahishatan, because zina is a fahisha, abomination, a severe immorality and sin. Wasa asabila, and zina is the worst way of life in our social life. Not about that ayah either. So fawahish, in whatever way, which we commit openly, or in private. Some people commit fahisha, immorality, in public. And some pe people do it in privacy. I'm not talking about the, that ayah either. The ayah I said, it is comprehensive when talking about good and evil. Abdullah bin Mas'ud said this. This is the ayah, very comprehensive when come to order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in talking about good and evil. It is ayah number 90 in Surah Al-Nahl. Surah Al-Nahl, the surah of the bee. In that surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave order to the bees where to go and what type of fruits and flowers to eat in order to produce honey. In that honey, there is a healing for human beings. Even the bee, we given orders to produce that. In the Surah Al-Nahl, in ayah number uh, 90, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan wa ita idhil qurba. Three positive orders and three negative orders. The three positive orders, he said, Inna Allah, verily Allah, 
Ya'amuru, he command, he enjoin, he order, bila adil, with justice, moderation, balance, wal ihsan, and goodness, and being good, and saying good, and passing good to others. Wa ita idil qurba, and helping your relatives who are in need. This is a positive thing that Allah wants us to do. Do this, and do this, and do that. Justice, goodness, and giving and sharing. And the negative basis in the same ayah, is say, وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغِي And he forbid you from fahsha. And fahsha, as we say, it is a sexual immorality. And any extreme sin that a human can go through in their life, we call that fahisha extremely bad, socially, morally, religiously, financially, and by all means. So let's go to study these six basic orders Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want us to live up to tonight. And first of all, we need to know who is talking. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah rabbul alameen. If we don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we say bismillah, in the name of Allah, who is Allah? The first thing he wants us to know about him is ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the most merciful, the most beneficent, the one who will remain merciful to you in this dunya, even when you disobey, disobey him even when you worship someone else, even when you declare war on him, he's still merciful to you. He lets you walk and talk and decide and eat and drink and breathe. He still does that, that is Allah. Who can we found beside Allah like that? Ar-Rahim, the one who will give you special mercy on the day of judgment. When we choose in this dunya to do his will, and live according to his order and teaching. If you still don't know who is Allah yet, he continued to say, Malik Yawmuddin. If the word Allah did not make sense, and the word Ar Rahman did not make sense, and the word Ar Rahim did not make sense, one more to go. Malik Yawmuddin. Not the king of the day of judgment because people sometimes don't know what is the meaning of a king. And the thing, a king is someone who is in power today in this dunya now. But Maliki is the master on the day of reckoning. And master is someone who will bring the kings to judgment, the emperors to judgment, the decision makers to judgment, the ministers, the leaders, everybody will be on their knees in front of him on the day of judgment. That is the meaning of Maliki Yawmuddin, the master on the day of judgment. And a master is the one who control all. And then we say, after knowing him like that, it is that Allah is talking to us tonight and always in this Quran. Inna Allah ya'muru, Allah order all of us, billa adil. Justice, what is justice? Justice is truth in action. Truth that is walking on earth. Truth that is done and applied and practiced. Because sometimes we have beautiful names, but they're not in action. For example, if you say to the world today, with this suffering, the social injustice, the racism, the colonialism, who can bring justice? They will say the United Nations. The name is good, but that United Nation is there to divide between the superior and the inferior. It is another way to laugh at humanity. It existed a long time ago, and every day we see more injustice on our planet, every day. So we don't expect justice from that. It is something every one of us has to bring into this life. And we need to talk about justice 
because our world is drowning in the waters of injustice everywhere. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he order justice, balance, truth. Inna Allah ya'amuru bil adil, to be just. And to start with justice between me as a person and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How to be just with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First of all, we live up to the only reason he created us for. And what is that? To recognize him and do his will. And this word is frightening to all of us. If we talk about justice, and then I ask myself, oh Adam, as an Imam, are you just to all those people who trusted you in the name of Allah and they pray behind you? And they give up their time, their families, and they decided to listen what you have to say tonight. Are you just to them? It is very scary to say yes. And this is similar to Al Hassan al Basri when somebody asked him, Oh Abu Said, oh Said's father, a mu'minun anta, are you faithful? Do you have faith? And then Al Hassan al Basri said, Al Imanu Imanain. There is two types of faith. Which one are you talking about? If you are talking about when people claim, I believe in Allah, I believe in the angels, in the messengers, in the books, in the destiny and in the day of judgment and life after death, if that is what you are asking about, of course I believe in all of that. And everybody claim to believe in that. But if you are asking about the other faith, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ خُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ He's saying here, Iman and being faithful, not just saying I believe in Allah, in his angels, in his messengers, in his books, in the destiny, on the day of judgment and life after death, Everyone can claim that. But the true Iman Allah is talking about is this one. And he said, The true faithful people are those people whenever Allah's name is mentioned. Their hearts will become fearful and obedient and ready to say, Oh Allah, oh Allah I, I heard your name. What did you say? Whatever you say, I will obey. So their heart will submit straight away if Allah is the one who is speaking to them. And whenever they read Allah's words, the verses of the Quran, every ayah they read, it will increase their iman. Says so they grow every day, more than the growth of their bodies. Their iman grow, and the muscle of their iman also grow. وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا Always, if they do iqra, iqra mean read, read Allah's words, and every ayah they read, their iman and their faith will increase, and their ibadah and worship to Allah will increase also. وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And in their life, they, full, they put their full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they mean it. They have no fear to anything around them because they put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the true believers and the believers in truth. So when somebody asks me or you, are you just and fair to those people who Allah made you responsible for as an imam? Do you think in the court of Allah, everyone who prayed behind you, or followed you all of these years, do you think you can say to Allah on the day of judgment, I did no wrong to any one of my ma'amum, not in front of them and not behind them either. Have you been honest and just unfair to them? It is very scary to say. Have you been just being a husband to your wife? Have you been just being a wife to your husband? Did you read? the terms and conditions of marriage. 
when you took somebody's uh, son or somebody's daughter, you use the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did you fulfill the terms and the conditions? Have you been just in your marriage life? Have you been just in the way you deal with your children? Did you ever eat food hiding from your children or behind them? Because the food is so yummy and nice. And you wait until your kids go to bed and then you eat it by yourself. Are you really a parent? No, you are not. Have you done that? A real parent will never do this. Why? Because they are just unfair. Whatever they eat, the wife will eat and the kids will eat. But what about if a parent does it? What do we call them? Mean and selfish and careless, and they have no love in their souls. If we cannot leave our children hungry while we are eating, if we cannot leave them thirsty when we are drinking, and if there is a threat in the city, and we are told to leave the city right now, we will not run and leave them behind. Did we do this? No. So, have you been fair to them also when come to your journey to Allah since Allah told you, O oh, you who believe, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you who believe, as a father, as a husband, as a grown up brother, Qo anfusakum wa ahlikum naran wa quduhan nasu wal hijara. Protect yourself and your family. Yourself mean you and your children. And your family mean your wife. Protect them from the fire. You didn't leave them hungry when you are eating. How come you went to play sobo and you didn't wake them up? It means you happy to be in Jannah while they are burning in Jahannam. This is injustice. And Allah gave order to be fair when you are eating, when you are drinking, when you are learning. Where is the justice? When you know what your family don't know, but you are happy to sentence them to the death in ignorance. Where is the justice here? So when you are asked, have you been just? It is very hard to say yes. And we have to be just to everybody. And we want to be just to one another. The only one, we don't want him to be just to us is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah is just to me and to you, we will not be living by today because he will give back to us what we have done. But Allah does not do that. He let go and he cover us up. Sometimes we see a sin and we want to do it. And sometimes we fail and we go ahead and do it and sometimes we don't. And that's why Umar bin Khattab when he, he was asked, what do you say about people? What do you think about people who love to commit sin, they love to commit it, and they feel like committing that, but they end up not doing that. What do you say about this type of people? And Umar bin Khattab said, These type of people who love to commit sins and want to do it, but in the end, they will say, no, I will not do it. These people are people who Allah fill up their heart with Iman. This is the people of Iman, because shaitan puts a whisper in their heart, but they don't do it. And that is a daily jihad we go through. Everybody likes to commit a sin because we enjoy sins when we commit them. The sins with a pleasure, but Iman will wake us up and we don't do it. Umar calls this type of people, the people whose heart is full of Iman. So don't feel guilty when we fail to commit a sin as long as the good wolf win the fight and the bad wolf will lose the fight. So order number one from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the comprehensive ayah in the Quran when it comes to good and evil, the good number one is justice. If we don't have justice, we can never be good in any dimension of life. Justice is what is required in every step that we make in our, our dunya. Justice in my family justice in the masjid, justice at work, justice to myself, in the real battle that taking place. And we know the real battle is taking place where? Between what we know in our head and what we feel in our heart. This is where the real battle goes, the most severe battle.
is what we know in our head. Sometimes we know the truth, but we feel like in our heart, we want to go against it. Who will win? So we need the justice. Inna Allah ya'amuru bila adil. Allah order justice. If we don't have justice, we are not allowed to deal with mankind, to deal even with the animals. Justice is, is what is required. Justice may go to sleep. Just talk about one so far. So I will go through it quickly then, inshallah, because you want to know what are these three positive order from Allah and what is the three negative ones. So the three, number one is justice. It's very important, important to be just in our life, in these problems. Be fair to your heart. Don't kill your heart with fear. It is time to live up to the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, al mu'minu al qawi khair. A powerful believer is better. We need to show power and strength in this difficult time, in the lockdown. Let us walk with the muscle of our faith and fear none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So justice and ihsan. Ihsan simply it means to be good to all mankind when we talk to them when we deal with them and pass anything good that will affect their life. Ihsan means to drive for excellence, do everything perfect in everything Allah wants us to do. Don't just do it. The way we look for Ihsan and the best will come to looking for money. We never stop looking for money and we want the most out of it. We never stop looking for life and we want to live as long as possible. When come to house, is one is the biggest one until we get old and we need the smallest one. Why don't we shift this into our Iman, into the home where our life will be forever? Drive for excellence in our wudu. Make the best wudu ever Allah will love for us to perform. Don't make wudu with laziness. Drive for excellence when we are performing our salat, when we are giving charity. When we're dealing with people, especially in the time of crisis, everybody is weak nowadays. And the heroes are those who can talk about hope and make people feel strong. People are suffering a lot. Let us do a son this time. So justice and a son driving for excellence. Remember to give your brother who is in need. Ignore them being bad to you unfair to you. Just do what Allah wants us to do to them. The needy in your family, visit them, talk to them and say enough is enough to boycotting my blood ties. A blood cannot be separated. Friendship can come to an end. Marriage can come to an end. Having a boss can come to an end. But the brother, the sister, the uncle, the cousin, the father, the mother. This is something Allah made, don't cut it. And once we do that, Allah also will cut us from himself. So these are the three positive order Allah wants us to live up. Very basic things in our goodness, when we talk about goodness, justice, drive for excellence when we do good and give mankind the best you have. And the other three positive ones, wayanha and il fahsha. Fahsha, is when we go extreme in saying the most foul language when we talk to people. Fahish, very ugly words and phrases and arguments when come to voice. Fahsha, when come to action, when we choose the worst to deal with people. Crime in it is pinnacle and it is worse. And when come to the sexual relation the Quran is talking about. And he said to people of Lord, Ata atun al fahishata, ma sabaka kum biha min ahad min al alameen. Zina is so bad and fornication. But look at the people of Lord, what they did. They had the lust to the same sex. A man going to a man with lust in their heart, which they're supposed to have towards the woman. This is fahisha, abomination, extremely 
abomination. This is fasha, and there are so many of them. So, wayanha anil fasha wal munkar. Munkar is anything bad we do, and people can see it or know about it. Because people's duty when they see bad we do or hear it, they have to tell us, don't do this. Al amr bil ma'roof wa nahyu al munkar. So, munkar is anything haram we commit, obviously. People can hear it or they can see it. Wal baghi is injustice. And injustice is when we abuse somebody else's right using our power, our authority, our position, our color, or anything else we have put other people down. Baghi is when we use our knowledge to abuse those people who don't know. Imam can have baghi when he use his position to abuse the ma'amum. A leader can use baghi, zulum, injustice, oppression to his followers. A husband can use it against his wife. A parent can use it against his children. This is baghi. And once we do that, we have lost it because Allah will be angry and he will come. And imagine Allah coming after me or you. We cannot escape. So we hope we don't do anything in our lives that will come make Allah come after us. So these are the six basic or the most important or comprehensive order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran when it comes to good and evil. And I think uh, the time is, I still have 10 minutes, I think, 45. Uh, anyway, in case the time ended, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength so we can overcome this uh, lockdown. We don't know how long it will go, but no matter what, stay on the station of Ibadah. And when you leave this place, inshallah, you can go to Surah to Nahal and find out what order Allah gave to the bee when Allah ordered the bee to serve us as human beings. Your Lord has commanded the bee and ordered him make homes and have from the mountains, in the caves, women are shagar, or in the trees. Sometimes you see the bees in the cave of the trees. Or what men can made for you as a bee hives. After that, eat from every type of fruits. And follow the ways your Lord has drawn for you to get to make the honey, in the end, what come out of the bellies of the bees, a water, a drink, honey, in it there is a healing for mankind. So when you go to the tunnel, you can read that ayah, and then go to ayah number 90, and live with it word by word. Allah is giving order, do three things, and don't do three things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our life longer. If living longer will make us better, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our life shorter. If having a shorter life will stop us from committing more sins, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove this pandemic and set us free because we love sitting again together in the masjid to share what we have to share. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep all of you healthy. Mm -hmm. I never forget to say your dua. Bismillahil Ladi, La Yadurru Ma Asmihi, Shayun Fil Ardi Wala Fis Sama, Wahua Samiul Ali, Wasalamu Alaikum, Warahmatullahi Taala Wa Barakatu. Wa alaikum salam, Warahmatullahi Taala.